You know, uh, most of my life, I've, I've talked about this a good bit lately, but most of my life I've been hearing from people. I've been hearing from teachers in middle school, high school. I've been hearing from professors in college that the United States was in collapse. Its economy was going down in the 50s and 60s. The Soviets were going to overtake us in the 70s, 80s. It was Japan. It's been China over the past 20 years. Right now, we had jobs numbers out on Friday. The best jobs numbers uh, match the best job numbers over the past half century. The dollar stronger than at any time in the past half century. You compare the United States economy right now to any economy across the world, any other country, any other leader would take our economy in the second. And yet, the stock market keeps falling. Why? One word, inflation. To break down the numbers, let's bring in former Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner. Uh, Steve, great job numbers. Uh, great. Uh, the, the dollar is extraordinarily strong. Our economy, as you and I have both said, relative to the rest of the world, much better uh, than, than other countries. At the same time, though, it's, well, I guess because I'm always looking at the positive when it comes to the U.S. economy, I guess the bad news is, at least for the Fed and for people in the market, is our economy is so resilient, our economy is so strong that the Fed just can't tamp it down. So they're going to have to keep raising interest rates, which, of course, is bad for the stock market. Take us through it. Well, you, you said in a nutshell, Joe, that's exactly what's going on. But we can start with the jobs numbers, because, as you said, the, de the Democrats have an incredibly strong argument for the fall about what's going on in the sort of real economy in terms of jobs. We had 263,000 jobs created last month. You can see that in the first chart over on the left in the yellow bar. And that follows three other months and many other months before that of very strong jobs creation. We have unemployment at, a, at the lowest it's been since the 1960s. You can see that in the yellow bar there at 3.5%. Uh, and But the problem is that the, the numbers came in a bit better than expected. You may think that's good news, but it's bad news, which I'll get to in a second. You see the little red bars at the top of the yellow bars showing you that what the expectation was and the fact that both of those numbers came in a bit better. And then the other number, which we watch very carefully, is how many Americans are actually out in the labor force looking for work or working, so-called labor force participation. And you can see that that ticked down a little bit last month, contrary to expectations of it remaining flat. And that's bad news because it means Americans are still not coming back into the labor force to the extent we wanted them to and expected them to as the economy recovered. And we can all debate why that is. But fewer Americans in the labor force means more pressure on wages, means more inflation, as I'll talk about in a second. All right, take us to the next chart. So the next chart gets to the yin, and we talked about the yin. Here's the yang of the situation, which is wages uh, falling behind inflation. And so uh, the, the yellow in the middle is the difference between wages and inflation. You can see on the left before the pandemic that wages were outpacing inflation. The economy was doing really well. Americans' real income was going up. And then you can see on the right that inflation, which is the red line, kind of took over and got above the black line, which is wage increases. And so this is the, that gap in there, that whole yellow area, is the extent to which Americans are falling behind because of inflation being higher than wages. The problem is the only way we know to tamp down inflation is to get wage growth to come down a bit. It came down a tiny bit last month, still running at right. about 5%. We generally like that. The problem is that for inflation to get to 2%, wage growth has to get down to 3 or 4%. So if, if you're looking at these charts at home, let's keep that chart up for a second, because if you're like me, sometimes when you see charts and numbers and to, uh, to actually, uh, you know, things start to blur for me. I'm a simple guy. Uh, <laughs> but, but a good way to look at this is you see that yellow uh, starting in May, 20, uh, May of 21, that yellow represents pain, pain for working class Americans, pain for middle class Americans who see their wages going up which is the black line, but not as fast as inflation, which is the red line. So despite the fact they're making more money, that yellow represents the gulf between the money they're making in wages and how fast prices are going up. And that at the end of the day, Steve, that ends up really, really bad news 
for middle class Americans, for working class Americans. Uh, and also uh, go to the third chart to show it's also bad for their retirement. It's also bad for investments. It's also uh, bad for people that are invested in the stock market. So what happened on Friday, uh, Joe, is as soon as those numbers hit, the market reacted because they were, as I said, on the mo for the most part, better than expected. So what happened? The expectation for the next Fed meeting in, uh, uh, later this month jumped the odds of a, of a 75 basis point or 0.75 percent in the uh, vernacular increase in interest rates jumped from 88 percent, that's that black line to the left, all the way up to 95 percent. In other words, a virtual certainty will get a fourth increase of three quarters of a percentage point. The problem is that that's the enemy. Higher interest rates are the enemy of the stock market because when you have interest rates going up, it means Americans can turn to bonds and other kinds of fixed income investments and earn more income and then, and then they come out of the stock market. And so you can see the S&P immediately rolled over the futures at 830 when the news hit and then they just kept going down ended the day down about 2.8%, and they're expected to open up, uh, open down, excuse me, slightly today, but we felt a lot of pain on Friday, and this is exactly yeah. what has been ailing the stock market for some months now. And, and should in the future too, right, Steve? I mean, interest rates continuing to go up for quite some time. The stock market's still a very volatile place until inflation's tamped down, right? Sure, and interest rates are probably going to keep going up. I think many of us believe that the Fed's job in getting inflation down is tougher than the market thinks it is, and that means more interest rate increases. Not, I'm not here to predict the stock market, right. but, but history would tell you not great for the stock market. Yep. Steve Ratner, thank you very much. We'll be talking uh, with you about this a lot in the coming weeks and months. Coming up.